everybody. I'm Chrissy from Knitting in the Heights, and this is Josh. And we're here with basically my weekly, weekly, my monthly podcast. So this is the podcast for the month of September, and that was Gabriel saying hello. <laughs> um, so Josh, why don't we start by you showing us some works in progress if you want, and maybe some finished objects. All right. So I uh, cannot remember what I left off with since the last podcast, but I have some finished garments and some new projects and uh, some continued work on longer whips. So for finished projects, I am not sure what I already showed. I think I showed the capelet tank, the one with the cowl neck. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I'm not sure if I did show the oh so easy vest. Did I end up showing it? I did not. Okay, so, um, because I showed you this, um, outside of <laughs> everything. So, uh, yeah, this, it was not oh so easy to knit. However, trying to repattern it the way that I thought it was going to be, um, it was disastrous. <laughs> so, um, the original pattern, I'm actually very happy with it. I've been wearing this uh, so often, so um, oh, oh so easy, maybe not so much, but oh so nice, yes, so it basically knits up into a rectangle, I have not blocked it, I just wanted to wear it because I love it, so it is very long and drapey, and yeah. Uh, I went with the size medium for the actual length, and then just went with, I think, a small for the back width. But highly recommend this pattern for anyone who wants to do that. Also finished a couple items for my partner. I was working on the Krom cardigan, K-R-A-M. Good. And... You're back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to uh, the dining room slash dress form area. So I finished that cardigan and it is very 70s shag carpet. And I love it so much. It was a lot of fun to knit. Um, yeah, just some short sleeves um, to get a better look at the back really fun and then below that is the summer friday tank that i just finished and just weaved ends in on so here that is i really like just the kind of subtle detail in the shoulder area and the armholes uh camera on the computer okay there we go so then also Nice, fun little, just subtle, uh, but otherwise pretty simple pattern, fun to knit, also highly recommend. I will give names of designers for those patterns. Uh, we'll put it down below. Up. We'll put everything yeah. down below so it makes it easier for everybody. Um, I'm sorry for any background noise. Gabe is running back and forth eating some goldfish crackers. Um, so I guess I will show the progress on my So Faded because I am so happy. It is to the point where I'm on the second sleeve and I'm very excited and I'm going to try not to drop it. I just started the second sleeve tonight. Um, I finished the first sleeve yesterday and very happy with it. Okay, so this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's all yarns from my stash. So here we go, we got the second sleeve and I have all these stitch markers just to tell me where I put my decreases. So I did my first decrease and I'm about to start my second decrease. So we'll get there. I think this will probably be done in about a week and a half. And I am leaving in the ends as I go because I, I need to be able to wear this, I think pretty soon. I will block it, but I put it on and it is, a, it's oversized for me. So I think when we cast on um, the rocket T, I'm going to go down a, a size. Um, I think I want to say I did a size 48. That's what I think I did on this. And if this is a 48 on that gauge of needle uh, with the same, because it's fingering weight yarn, if it's this big, I want it to be a little bit smaller. Right? Oversized, yes, but not too baggy. 
So yeah, so I'm really happy with it. It's almost done. It's so exciting. That's beautiful. Thank you. And your works and your works were beautiful too. Um, the only other thing I have going is my shawl, and I've like put I think two rows on it. <laughs> So we'll show that real quick. And then if you want to show your works in progress. So this is the oak something. It's not oak leaf. Golden oak. It's the golden oak shawl by Nim Teasdale. And I haven't done more than add one more milk, row. Please. And Gabe wants milk. So I'll get him milk in a second. Um, I have one more row of lace that I put on and that's it. Um, it takes a while to go one row and back. It takes like an hour to go one way. So this is something where I'll pick it up. I don't know how, I, I think, yeah, I'll get it done eventually. It's not something that is, I am really want to do right at this moment, but I will do it eventually. You wanna show some works in progress while I get some milk for this little boy? Totally. So I sewed in the ends, um, lots of ends on uh, on an ongoing sweater, uh, the Stephen West swing back pullover. I don't think I need to show that so much. I'm just trying to be tidier with my knitting um, now that I am adding more and more projects. But an exciting new project is actually in a super bulky weight. It is the Malabrigo Rasta. Um, and the Decemberist stall is coming along very nicely. This colorway, can we just talk about this? This is just, mm. and also super bulky, real plush. So it took a 24 hour period of just off and on knitting uh, to get all the way through the increases because this is knit from the center down and out. So it uh, started with, actually, yeah, started with this big section here, which is just a big stuck in it. Um, with a bunch of increases. That took no time at all uh, because this, uh, I love knitting with bigger needles and bigger yarns. It's it's just really fun seeing things fly by like time lapse. Um, so I am on to the lace section, which is, uh, I don't think I've gone through one full repeat of the lace. So it's not too, Oh my, this is, sorry, this is cumbersome. <laughs> so it's not too visible yet. You can see some of the lace, yeah. But it'll be really nice. I think I have maybe 16 more rows until I'm ready for the bind off. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just like, also, like the, how like polar opposite our two shawls are. <laughs> like the <laughs> it's like, an hour to go one row, you know, and yours is like, yeah, I did this whole shawl in 24 hours, you know, it's like, right. yeah, it's yeah. Crazy how like weight of yarn really does dictate how long something takes. I mean, when the stitches are not in the triple digits, <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible. And, yeah. but now, now it is in the triple digits. So this is taking a little longer and it's the lace section. But I have to say the pacing of it is so pleasant. Well, and thank you so much for knitting this for me because the you know that yarn was in my stash for years, literal years, and it just sat there and sat there, and I knew what pattern it should be. I just I cannot I, I it hurts my hands to knit on needles that big, so gotta stick with those uh, standard sizes, I guess. So. so do you have any other works in progress? Because that's really all I have right now. Yes. So I, oh, let me see. Disconnect and maybe they're reconnected now. Can you still hear me? <laughs> Technology is silly. <laughs> so uh, 
Which bag did I put that in? Um, oh, here it is. So I finished uh, Tribble, T R B B L, sorry, T R I B B L E dish scrubber. Um, but because it's still in this Creo cotton that's really soft, I'm thinking I'm just going to make it like a face scrubber. Uh, like when you got to go in hardcore on exfoliating. And yeah, just, uh, so that's fun. There's still so much of it left, so I'm starting another. <laughs> I mean, who can't use an extra face cloth or face scrubber? Now the next whip is, um, I did this more for how the yarn appeared in someone's project. Um, be, so I was searching who else had used uh, Barocco Pirouette yarn. Um, because again, I'm, I'm breaking my own rules. I think I said last time I would never again knit in boucle. What am I doing? <laughs> Let's do boucle, but it's a much more manageable, uh, boucle yarn, but it is the minimalist hat. Um, it's just a basic beanie, but I really loved how the size, the smaller size of needles for this gauge of yarn knits up. You can't really see the stitches unless you really pull it apart or, um, yeah, or look really close. Uh, but yeah, I just loved how it, um, in someone's project for the minimalist hat, it looked nothing like when they were using this yarn, it looked nothing like the original designers photos um, but I loved how it ended up looking like a kind of a beret so it'll be fun very cool very very cool and now we're about to cast on the rocket tea so Josh did not end up going yarn shopping he ended up going stash diving he did have to buy some lace weight yarn but Josh you want to talk about your plans for the rocket tea yes so I decided uh because i found some fingering weight yarn that had at least a little bit of cashmere in it i wanted this to have uh you know a more elevated kind of t-shirt feeling too and i was really jealous I, well I still i'm really jealous of the fiber content of your rocket tee which i'm sure you'll talk about uh, in a moment but this is uh, regular stock yarn, but it has 5% cashmere. Um, it's left over from some socks that I made last year for the holidays. Um, but I really like the colorway. I think it'll be fun to knit up with the contrast. Oh, this is Lana Grossa, I think cashmere or Berlin Street or Cashmere Street. Something has cashmere and Berlin in the title. Um, and then the this would be the main color, right? The lace is the main color? Something or other. The lace is just there. It's stripes. I mean, we're striping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm just using something from Knit Picks. It is the, I think, glossy lace. Um, What's and the fiber color... content on that? This is 7030 mohair silk. Cool. Cool. So I guess I'll show mine. And then you can show your second yarn because I know you're going to knit a second one of these. Yeah. All right. So I'm using ooh, an exploded ball. Um, this is from Murky Depths and the color way is called Naker and it's her Majuro base, which is 70% superwash merino, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. And then I'm striping it with a knit picks and this knit picks is luminescence. It is 100% silk, and the colorway is, what is the colorway? Of course it doesn't say it there. Does it say it there? Of course not. It gives me a color number, but it's like, it's baby pink. It's like they're the, the lightest pink, and the Naker actually has moments where that pink, it's hard to see on camera, but it actually has moments of that pink in there because it's supposed to look like mother of pearl. Naker is the inside of a like the mother of pearl that sheen that has the pink and the gray, so that's what we're doing. And we're I guess we're both knitting on size five needles, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is the other colorway you're going to use for your second one? So the other colorway is also same <laughs> brand, um, same line. It's just uh, yeah, has 
basically the same colors, but it doesn't have that brown. Instead, it's this light blue, which um, I'm wondering how that's going to knit up with this striping, because I've seen how it knits up in socks with a uh, lace pattern, and it could lean um, a little more feminine. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. If I happen to go yarn shopping or find yarns that I like in the interim between the first and second teeth, then cool. so be it. That is really cool. All right. So I guess if I'm not making, I'm not making a size 48, I'm making a size 44 and you decided on what size. I think I'm going to go for, um, pretty much straight size, uh, at 41 because okay. i have a 40 inch uh yeah 40 inch i guess you'd call it bust on a man too Best. <laughs> Chest. Best yeah. circumference. and yeah. you know it does call for a lot of positive ease but we both talked about like i don't need a lot of positive ease in this i don't think i hope because i know with these needles with late with this weight of yarn I know it's probably going to end up being bigger anyway. So, all right, it's time to cast on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go on mute and I will fast forward us so you guys can see us at least cast on together. Oh, what I love about the knitted cast on or the cable cast on though is doesn't have to be a long tail, period. <laughs> so I took Gabe to like all of the stores at the... Um, which I'm a bobber at uh, Bronx Terminal Market. Like we went to Target and we got nice. some school supplies. They didn't have line binder paper. Like what in the heck? They had the school supply section. There was no paper. Oh no. New York City. So I ended up buying some stuff off of Amazon. It'll be here in a couple of days, no biggie. But um, I like, I took him to Burlington Coat Factory first and I got his winter coat and it's really nice for 20 bucks nice yeah and then i got yeah. um him a t-shirt as well like a converse t-shirt for like seven dollars nice a good deal um i ended up getting a couple of t-shirts and then a couple of work shirts at um both target and marshall's and he picked out some cat toys oh yeah, yeah. Oh, i have to double check this knit from the top down right yeah, it's back. It, you're gonna do some shaping in the back, and then it joins because it's a V-neck. Okay, so I should probably do a relatively loose cast on. Mm, I'm just casting on like normal. You might actually need that a little structure. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because I tend to cast on tight. Oh, I don't. I just cast on normal because I'm used to doing socks, and I don't want those to be tight. I'm cast on. Right. Oh, so what do you think of Magic Loop um, knitting? Magic Loop? Oh, you mean where you have ends sticking out? <laughs> Very evil. I I was. I mean, I used it on the neck band of the sweater because I didn't of the um, so faded because I didn't have anything that was um like I didn't have a cord size, the right size. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a necessary evil. I don't like it. If I have a size that is closest, I prefer it. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's necessary. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> when, oh man, when patterns suggest using magic loop, it's just like, oh, but why though? Yeah. Uh, you know, I have used it for like mitts and stuff. And sometimes that does make sense. Um, yeah. Like color work, it does make sense uh as you working on one side and then the other side versus trying to divide that pattern over four or three needles yeah. does make sense yeah mm. so you excited to get started with um teaching soon since all the kiddos are heading back to school yeah and it'll be nice having a fresh group yeah you have beginners yeah that's and gonna be awesome them yeah, no, I'm excited about that. I need to double count it and make sure, and I have a really long tail that I will, I don't mind chopping some of this off. I know I have more than enough yarn. 
next row, I'm not going to read this out loud. Something, 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 something. Yay. Okay. So I need, I do need stitch markers. Because if you don't know, this is a raglan. Yep. And my stitch markers are New York inspired stitch markers. You know what? Well, nice. I don't have Minecraft. So what can there I we go. So how do you feel about knitting stockinette black? Are you somebody that hates it or do you not mind it? Knitting stockinette flat? Yeah, not in the round. You don't have to knit and then purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. Yeah, I mean, I used to be more averse, but because some of the projects I've really liked have required me to do a lot of purl rows, uh -huh. I've just gotten over it and learned how to um, be quicker. Okay. Enough. Yeah, I still if it, if it's a lot of purling, um, that's not just like doing a purl row every other row, then it's annoying. Right. Like if it, if there's an if it's easier to literally just turn the thing inside out and knit, I'd rather or yeah. Got it. But but flat, no, it's, that's fine. Yeah, it's funny because. Actually, you know, when I first started to knit, I know I've talked about this, I knit back, like I flipped my yarn backwards, right? So everything was twisted. Mm -hmm. But I always purled the correct way. Like I always purled the right direction. And so I got really fast at it because I never had to reteach myself. So I don't mind purling. Right. Um, I know some people absolutely abhor it, but I don't mind it at all. The thing that I don't like with purling that I'm noticing, it's, and it's just about my purling, is, <clears throat> sorry, um, especially with that super bulky yarn um, for the Decemberist shawl, is that I have to purl tight and knit loose. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like I have to really pull the stitches through on the knit stitches and make them make the loops or kind of, yeah, they make them initially look larger huh. than they should, and then it'll even out on so the purl row. Like, so is your purl like looser than your knit stitch? So my knit stitch, basically the way I tension it now, um, whenever I'm doing any knit stitch uh, or long chain of knit stitches, is I don't hold the yarn except against the needle and oh. with the bump over my index finger to be able to pull from. Okay. Um, so I don't I don't really do much tensioning on the knit uh, gotcha. stitches um, or knit side. But on the purl side, I do have to loop it around my pinky and have right. that bump to pull from um, so that it really secures it and the right needle isn't, or it's not too slack on the right Got needle. It. Interesting. Yeah, and I think that is more a me thing. <laughs> I remember when I first started knitting, the person that taught me to knit, because I was a crocheter for so many years, she was just so, and I crocheted some really complicated things. Um, I remember her just being amazed that my tension was really pretty good for a beginner right off the bat. I mean, other than the fact that my stitches were twisted. Like, <laughs> because a lot of people that, when they first start knitting, their tension is all over the place, you know? When's the last time you knit something in fingering weight? Because <laughs> you've been Hold up. everything's been flat up your needles, and it's definitely not fingering weight stuff you've been knitting. Okay, I have the right amount. Um, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, this is this is also what's taking me a while. It's like everything is feels a little more fiddly. Small. <laughs> yeah. And also, I just, you know this, I also just have big hands and long fingers, so everything that's below, like, a size 10 needle just feels a little dainty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm on the official row one. Woohoo! And let me double check I'm on the right side. Yes. Okay. Uh, next row. Pearl across. Oh, okay. Pearl two. So after two, then after three. You need three. stitch markers. You got your stitch markers? Yeah. 
And I'm going to use, I think this is, um, actually, yeah, because we're not doing front and back yet. It just starts from the back, right? Right. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to use the, all the coffee beans. Oh, cool. Yay. And I forget, do, um, do shirts or is it raglan sleeves that has the German short rows? German short rows can be in a raglan to raise up the back of the neck so that uh, it sits even because most people's, especially women's bodies, the way mm -hmm. they're shaped, you need to raise the back of the neck so that the hem will be even at the bottom. Okay, because I think um, that was what I did in the uh, in one of the tank tops, okay. and um, they just didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't know that it was called a German short row or just short rows or whatever yeah, the, the other names are. Yeah. Yeah, until I YouTubed it. Yeah, and I wonder if it makes more sense for women versus men to use them. I don't know. I've seen them in men's knitting as well. I'm not sure. But I think in general, most people need a higher neckline than they do like collar up here. So it just raises the back of the neck. That's all it does. I find it more comfortable because I don't like a crew neck. Yeah. Um, like I like this. That's a big reason why I really wanted to do this V-neck with you. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're purling. That's right. I'm knitting, but you're purling. <laughs> I'm purling. <laughs> So um, just a couple of little announcements um, while we're doing this. So the giveaway I did in August, uh, the person who I drew for as the prize winner, I tried contacting that person several times. Um, I know that they know they won, but I never received an email. So I'll be drawing another prize winner and putting that person's information at the end of this video. Also, I have a giveaway that's going to be happening in October. So um, if you're interested, it's of a 50 gram skein of yarn and I'll throw in a 20 gram, sorry, Gabe's loud, um, a 20 gram skein so that you can make a pair of socks. Um, I think there's some stitch markers. So I'll talk about that in my October uh, vlog when I do Vlogtober. So that's coming up. So yeah, I will put the winner of the fiber um, down below and I'll try to tag them. So please make sure you send me your your address <laughs> into my email. That would be really helpful. I can't send it to anybody if I don't get your actual contact information. Because I really want to get this stuff out of my dash. Because I'm not going to use it and it's beautiful and somebody needs to use it, for goodness sakes. If I actually spun, I would be using it, but I don't really spin. And it hurts my hands to spin, so. So how's it coming there, Josh? I am about halfway through this first row. So my house smells amazing because I have this candle going. It's like my favorite scent. It's called sugared pecans and it smells like pecan pie. Since Ooh. I'm working with like cinnamon and all that stuff, I have to kind of avoid those candle smells, but I still like the smell of autumn. And this reminds me of the smell of autumn. Last year I found one that was like caramel pumpkin. It had no cinnamon Ooh. in it. It was also really nice, but it finally died. Like I had to just throw it away today, but I pulled this one out and it is delicious smelling. It smells like I'm baking. I did bake this weekend. I made um, some banana bread because I had to use up some bananas. Yummy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So last night I, I made a big vat of pumpkin. Oh, so, tell me what that is because they won't know. So, so I am half Filipino um, on my mother's side, and we have some staples, like most, uh, I find most cultures um, have like their version of noodles or dumplings or rolls. Um, so in the Philippines, um, some really popular food, which sometimes you'll find it from like a uh, food truck or street food vendors, or you'll also just find families making them at home regularly. Um, a noodle dish uh, that we have is called pancit, 
uh, P-A-N-C-I-T. And um, the thing that is different about how I grew up um, eating pancit is that um, my mother preferred one of the two types of noodles that are usually used. So the two types of noodles are um, the bihon, pancit bihon, is uses the really thin rice noodles. If you are thinking Chinese food, it's like the um, meifun. Yeah, noodles I are some, really thin. I actually have some in, in my ca cabinet, so I need to get your pasta recipe. Like, I love those. I don't know how to make it with those noodles, because um, oh. my mom my mom does not like <laughs> that kind of noodles. So um, I've had uh, pancit where it's just those kind of noodles, um, and it's all or also mixed with the kind my mom does like, which is the uh, pancit canton, which are the thicker egg noodles. Um, that's much more like uh kind of like a lo mein okay so it's like a, it's like filipino lo mein exactly yeah and it's very easy to make um a lot of filipino food just uses nat the natural flavor of the foods that you're cooking so um this was noodles cooked with uh chicken cabbage uh carrot onion bell pepper um i think i said garlic already Maybe. Oh no, okay. but garlic, of course. Okay, always cool. garlic. <laughs> All right, we are less than a minute before we're going to get turned off. So here is my little worm. I have cast on. Let me see your little worm. Beautiful. Little wormy. <laughs> All right, so we'll, you guys will see us make progress on this over the next few weeks. Thanks so much for joining me today, Josh. I'll see you again Thank soon. You. Bye, everybody. Bye.